Hey everyone, this is Krypton Tricks channel. A purely peer-to-peer -peer storage network would give users full control over the data they generate on the internet without going through a remote server. Users could place their data directly on devices they already own and simultaneously replicate it to other devices on the network. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, if you remember, such a solution already exists. The subspace network is an attempt to make blockchain more energy efficient efficient based on the proof-of-archival storage consensus, which replaces compute-intensive mining with a storage-intensive alternative. With the subspace blockchain, farmers maintain neither state nor history while retaining the security properties and advantages of full node decentralization. What subspace network offers its users? This decentralized repository of key values with the familiar JavaScript API makes it easier for developers to create applications where users can own their data. Subspace is a peer-to-peer -peer network of devices that is accessible via any browser, mobile or desktop application. Data is replicated and encrypted in a cryptographically secure way, then distributed across multiple devices with verifiable proof of replication. Hosts provide free space to the network in exchange for regular allocation of subspace tokens. These agreements are encoded as smart contracts in a distributed ledger protected by the proof of archival storage consensus. Subspace aims to become a simpler design of a decentralized data storage network focused on convenience for developers and aimed at mass adoption by end-users. At its core, Subspace is a decentralized database massively divided into a network of devices with internet access, which can include mobile phones, tablets, desktop computers and traditional servers. So as an end-user, you get full control over your data and unprecedented access to it. Everything can be exceeded from anywhere using most modern devices. Wonder how such a thing can work? Well, let's have a look. How does it work? First, hosts pledge free desk space and agree to store data on behalf of the network in exchange for subspace tokens. When a new device is connected to the network, its owner generates a storage contract that determines the amount of disk space and the reward interval. This space is seeded using owner's private key, which allows to implement proof of archival storage. This consensus protocol is embedded in the storage contract, which is independently placed placed on the database and transmitted to validators for confirmation and inclusion as a transaction in the next block of the ledger. After publication, the host will broadcast its availability, sending out a joint message to the nearest neighbors that refer to the transaction. As the joint message spreads across the network, each node adds a node to a local hash table in memory that keeps track of the current state of all nodes in the network. As hosts exit the network and reconnect, their accumulated time is adjusted. If the nodes remain offline for a time exceeding their contract interval, they're automatically excluded from the pool of participants. The main idea is very elegant and it is really interesting scene brought to life. Now, the most often brought up concern I have seen is security. It is understandable there have been several big hacks this year. Security. However, on this front the subspace surprises quite a bit. The integrity of the network is built on the premise that random interaction ultimately leads to a consistent and uniform distribution of records. In order for this to work, each node must know about a significant part of the other nodes in the network and use the algorithm to search for other nodes when writing, replicating or balancing records. While the network is small, it is quite realistic for each node to eventually maintain a consistent picture of the entire network. As the network grows, it will be possible to divide the network into clusters, with each node knowing more about the clusters located closer to it and less about the ones located further away. To put it simply, no single node will be able to access the full network and thus the security will be maintained. Again, pretty elegant. Conclusion. And there you have it, a quick overview of the subspace network.
By the way, there is great news for people who, like me, had long been following this project. The Gemini testnet is live. I will go into more detail about it in the next video, so stay tuned. Please subscribe, like and share this video if you think anyone could get value from it. Good luck, guys! Bye!